What's going on YouTube? My name is Chris and welcome to Immodernation. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to make a GPU backplate by hand, sort of, without the use of any computer-aided laser cutter or CNC router materials. Basically, I watched a bunch of other YouTubers do it, and now I'm going to teach you how to do it. Back that plate up, girl. So this is part two of the GPU backplate modding series. And if you want to learn how to make basic, boring, non-RGB backplates, you can watch the first video by clicking on the card in the upper right hand corner. Now, if you've spent any amount of time on social media, you've probably seen RGB lit GPU backplates. They're pretty common in water cooling, high end computer systems. However, at a price of between 50 and $70, they're quite price restrictive and you'll see why they cost that much by the end of this video. So if you're looking for information on how to build your own RGB GPU backplate, you are in the right place. And if you're confused as to how an RGB GPU backplate is put together, you are not alone. But if you're looking for a straightforward guide from start to finish showing you exactly how to build an RGB lit GPU backplate, this might not be the video for you. See, this video started out as a guide and became more of an experiment. It's like the age old expression, I can't show you how to do it, but I could show you 50 ways not to. Because even though there are many YouTube guides showing you how to make an RGB GPU backplate, there are plenty of tips and tricks that even the pros won't tell you. So I created three GPU backplates for this series. And the first one is a very basic non RGB one. This one I recommend for beginners because it takes a lot less time to put together. It's fairly easy to do and it looks absolutely banging in your system. The second and third ones are RGB GPU backplates. What I ended up doing was using my scroll saw to cut out the design in the back plate, which I thought was a little bit too difficult. So I decided that I would create a second version that was much easier. It's about getting the results you want with less time. Enough said. And the hand cut one ended up being my favorite. In fact, it's featured in the system behind me. So really you've got three guides to choose from. It's like picking your own Gundam level. You guys, you guys know what I'm talking about, right? Right guys? Guys, we're going to start with the easier RGB backplate. It consists of a black vinyl stencil on top of thin acrylic with a plastic light diffusing plate attached and a white vinyl backing. This is probably the easiest way of making RGB GPU backplate that I found. To cut out the vinyl, I'm using a Silhouette Portrait 2 die cutter. It's computer aided for more precise cutting since I don't want to spend a whole day cutting this out. I could, but why? I took this EVGA graphic from a Google image search and used Photoshop to create the graphic. And then I used Silhouette Studio to cut it out. I do have to remove the letters by hand, so we're gonna fast forward through this part. Whatever your design is, the light will only shine through the holes in the vinyl, so we want just the surrounding of the letters, not the letters themselves. I went with the classic screen protector application method of applying the vinyl. I wet the vinyl with distilled water and applied it to the acrylic backplate position the vinyl exactly where I want it and then use a plastic razor blade or a squeegee, whatever you prefer, to push the water out from underneath. Now there are some bubbles in the acrylic, which is not bad. You really won't see them inside the case anyway, but if they bother you, damn perfectionists, you can pop them with a small blade and push the water out if needed. I next cut out a shorter backplate for the light diffuser. This one's about a half inch shorter width wise to accommodate for the LED strip. I used five millimeter polycarbonate for this plate because I wouldn't, I won't need to etch it. And I have a lot of leftover polycarbonate lying around for my work on the LCD side panel. Before attaching the diffuser to the vinyl backplate, I need to drill holes for the magnets. I'm using button cell baby magnets to attach the backplates to the GPU. Now you could use double sided tape if you want, but the magnet method produces cleaner results. And I, I think it makes it easier to quickly swap out backplates feature that I forgot to mention in the last video. Light diffuser plate is done. Now it's time to glue the diffuser plate to the vinyl backplate. I'm using weld on three acrylic adhesive. It's a clear acrylic cement that will fuse the two plates together. So for that reason, it's not really an adhesive. I've used the squeeze bottles in previous videos and I absolutely despise them. 
So I copied Jeffrey Mays from JMM Mods and went with the adhesive dispensing syringes. These work great for controlling the amount of adhesive and directing it in a very precise way. Also, drawing up the liquid is a lot easier than those squeeze bottles. Link is in the video description below. If you buy these, just don't leave them around or people will think that you have a problem. Yeah, a cash flow problem after all these mods I bought. Seriously, I'm poor. Join my Patreon, please. Next, I'm installing the LED strip. I already soldered the connector on and I added heat shrink to blend it in with the background inside of my PC. To install it, I'm taping it down to hold it in place with the LEDs facing the edge of the acrylic, hence edge lighting. Once the hot glue gun heats up, I'll add hot glue to hold the LED strip in place. After the plates dried, I applied white vinyl to the back. This is going to reflect the light that's bouncing back and forth through the polycarbonate. It's important that there are little to no air bubbles because they will appear as black dots in the final product. Finally, I'll finish it off with a white vinyl wrap over the top. Don't forget to add black electrical tape over the top to cover the LED lights that might be shining through, otherwise you'll get something that looks like this. All right, we're gonna connect the power and we're done with plate number two. GPU backplate number three is by far the hardest and it made me understand why a lot of professional modders end up using computer aided laser cutting machines. I mean, they're precise, they're really quick, but fuck, they cost a lot of money up front and they're just not made for everyday modders like you and me. For plate three, I cut out and traced the stencil in pencil on the acrylic and then drilled some holes into it to pass the blade through for the scroll saw. It's better to cut the design just inside of the line instead of on it because I could always file excess away but I can't add more material back. You want to take your time for this part to produce the best results. You know, in retrospect, I didn't need 5mm acrylic for this part, 3mm would have been just fine, but the 5mm did create deep chasms for each letter that looked great when it was done. Anything more shallow than 3mm, you'd be better off using the vinyl stencil method from the previous backplate. If you need to, you could use spackle or some kind of body filler to fill in any of the mistakes. Although remember, after the body filler dries, be sure to sand it smooth with sandpaper. You may have noticed that this acrylic is black and not clear like the previous backplates. That's because it's going to be a white backplate and I didn't want light to shine through. I'll discuss why I do this later on in the video. Next was paint and prime. In the interest of time, I scuffed the acrylic and hit it with Rust-Oleum 2X cover paint and primer. It's faster than waiting for the primer to dry and then sanding before painting. Three coats was really all that it needed. While that was drying, I cut another light diffuser backplate out of cell cast acrylic. Note that I said cell cast acrylic. This is important and you'll see why later. I traced the EVGA logo onto the paper backing using the painted backplate once it had dried. To make the design stand out more, we're going to etch the acrylic. I don't own a laser etcher, so this part was done by hand. Not to fear though, I brought out the handy Black & Decker rotary tool with the Dremel flex shaft attachment and a Dremel 7103 diamond engraving bit. On the medium setting, I was able to etch the plate in about 20 minutes. You don't need to engrave deep, just enough to turn the plate a cloudy white, so keep the pressure against the back plate to a minimum. If you notice that the logo is backwards, first of all, kudos to you for paying attention, and second, it's because I want the engraving to be on the back of the plate when it's glued together, not the middle. I can now remove the rest of the paper backing. Can you see the difference between the edge portion and the clear portion? It's like night and day, right? I checked it against the light diffuser plate and I realized that I need to enlarge the letters a little bit to cover more ground. If you've been watching this video, you know how the rest of this guide goes. Add the magnets, glue the diffuser plate to the painted plate, tape the LED strip in before hot gluing, again checking to ensure that the LEDs are pointing into the acrylic. This time I wrapped the white vinyl over the top of the LEDs and over the back plate. I can do it this way because of the white vinyl blends into the white paint on the front of the back plate, so it looks almost seamless. All right, let's power it up.
So that is the end of this mod, but not the end of this guide, because you see through a lot of experimentation that I did, I learned lots of tips and hints along the way for making GPU backplates. So you remember earlier I said use cell cast acrylic for etching? This is critical. Do not use extruded or continuous cast acrylic because when you etch into it, unless it's cell cast acrylic, it's going to turn clear and not white. And in order for the light to be able to shine through, it needs a little bit of opacity. And if you don't give it that by using continuous cast or extruded acrylic, the light is just not going to shine through the way that you want. Also, the thickness of the acrylic is important. Make sure for the light guide portion, you're using between three and five millimeters. Anything thinner than that and the light will not shine through properly. This is especially important for backplate number two. Secondly, if you're going to be making a vinyl backplate like I did in GPU backplate number two, the color of the vinyl is important. There's a reason why I picked black. And the reason why is because light is not able to shine through black very easily. When I did the exact same thing with white vinyl and with white paint, the light shined through very easily. So there are a number of ways to combat this. One is to use black electrical tape on the back for the LED strip. That way the light doesn't shine through that portion. You could also do what I did, which is put electrical tape on the front, but that only works if your GPU backplate is black. Now in backplate number three, I was able to combat this by using black acrylic. The light was not able to shine through at all uh, which made my work a whole lot easier, especially because I was cutting out a very specific design. And it doesn't matter if you're using white vinyl, white paint, white out, the light is still going to shine through. You would have to put who knows how many coats or how many layers in order to stop the light from shining through. So that's just something to keep in mind. Um, it's much easier to make black GPU backplates than it is to make white ones. I imagine most of you are probably going to be making black ones anyways. Another tip that I want to give you is about drilling for the magnets. And now in that video, I talked about using a step bit like this one instead of using regular bits. And the reason why is because when you drill into the acrylic, um, the wood bits tend to splinter and shatter the insides, whereas this titanium bit, it presses down and it, it pushes out as it goes in. And what's nice about these is that they've got different steps on them. So depending on how big of a hole you want to make in the material, you can measure it quite easily without having to change bits on your uh, cordless drill. Very nice to have. There's a link down in the video description if you'd like to purchase one of these. They're not too expensive. If you're going to be doing any sort of modding in the future and drilling lots of holes, this is good to have. But if you don't want to purchase a step bit and you want to continue using your wood bits, that's fine. Just make sure that you lubricate the tip of the bit. <laughs> lubricate. Make sure you lubricate the tip of it before you start drilling. Uh, thank you to Steven Hamrick for that tip. Much appreciated. I want to take a little bit more time to explain why the type of acrylic is important. Now, I watched this YouTube video by modder Jeffrey Mays. He runs the website jmmmods.com. He's also a seller of RGB GPU backplates. And in one of those videos, he actually shows you how he installs the LED strip. Now, if you notice in the video, he installs the LED D strip with the lights facing up and then he folds the vinyl over. Now you might be asking yourself, well, Chris, why didn't you do it this way? I did and nothing happened. I couldn't figure out why. I watched the video maybe 50 times and I tried over and over and over to try to get it to work exactly the way that he did it. I mean, I even downloaded the video and zoomed in as far as I could to see how the lights were positioned and I came to the final conclusion. Jeffrey Mays is a demon. No, I'm just kidding. Um, so what I think is going on is that Jeffrey Mays is using a special type of acrylic. And this type of acrylic has special particles inside of it that allow light to diffuse evenly. Light guides for computer monitors are made of this special type of acrylic and a number of different companies sell them. Some common examples are Lucite, um, Acrylite um, Enlighten, I believe it's called. 
Uh, so these are a couple different products. These are made specifically for LED edge lighting and they will diffuse light evenly, allowing it to pass through. Uh, but this stuff is expensive. One website I found wanted like $14 for a square foot of this. And I just said, no, like <laughs> this becomes too cost prohibitive at that point. Uh, it's just not worth it. But you can understand by using very expensive acrylic, by, you know, using the glue, the LED strip, the, you know, the vinyl cutter, this project gets very expensive very quickly. So uh, I can understand now why a lot of people charge between 50 and $70 to make these. The material, the time, the equipment, it all adds up really quickly. Did I mention that he has a $10,000 laser cutter? Wish I had a $10,000 laser cutter. So yeah, these are just some of the back plates that I made in this video series. The third one is also there in the computer. These are the ones that never happened. This one, um, I actually uh, painted it uh, frosted and tried to get it to work that way, didn't work. Tried etching through it with my rotary tool, still didn't work. This one kind of broke off. Um, you can also see here where I was drilling through to put a magnet, crack the acrylic, so. This is trash. Here's another one. Um, I tried um, etching out the letters initially and then that didn't work. You can even see here, I used a uh, Dremel plunge router to try to drill through. That one wasn't very successful, so garbage. This one almost happened. So this was the first time I tried drilling through uh, the letters. Unfortunately, this one is just way too thin. Um, but you can see it's got the, the backing on it and I did um, some black vinyl backing so that the light wouldn't shine through. Fortunately, the first time I did it, the light shined through. So I had to take it apart and add the backing to it. So um, this one's garbage. Uh, this one was really close. Um, this one had, uh, I actually saved it. This is the original vinyl. <laughs> The original EVGA vinyl was on this. And um, the problem with this one, I don't know if you can see here, the light guide on the back of it was just way too thin. That's why I learned that you need three to five millimeters because if it's too thin like this one, the light's not gonna shine through the proper way. In fact, uh, if I got some video here I can show you, you could see that it doesn't illuminate very well because the light is not shining through the back plate. But uh, I still have the magnets in here where it attaches, um, I got the whole white vinyl backing on it. It actually came out pretty well. You can kind of see here, there's uh, some air bubbles where the vinyl wasn't pressed down all the way. That's very important if you're doing backplate number two, make sure you get all the bubbles out. And then this last one, I kind of came up with this idea that instead of etching out the letters individually, that I was just going to try to fake etch the plate. So one of the things I know about laser cutters is that they're, um, they're able to etch at less than a millimeter. So I thought, I got this crazy idea. I'm going to go ahead and just sand it to try to get that white hazy look. And it kind of got a little bit cloudy, but the problem is that it's all scratched to hell, so I can't use this. So this is a cell cast acrylic. Maybe I can find another use for this, um, or it's just gonna end up in the trash. So that is the GPU backplate series. Let me know if there are different ways that you have put together a GPU backplate. And if you've done a GPU backplate before, let me know how it turned out. I'm really curious to know how you did it and um, what the results were. Back that plate up, girl. Thank you so much for checking out this video, and if you enjoyed it, make sure you slap that like button below and share the video. And while you're at it, why not join the Modern Nation and get subscribed by clicking on that subscribe button below. And hey, when you do, don't forget to click on the bell icon inside the button to be notified the moment that I release new videos. If you have any kinds of questions, be sure to leave them for me in the comment section below, or why not hit me up on social media? I'd love to hear from you guys. And when you buy products from Amazon, consider using the affiliate links in the video description below. Thank you again so much for watching, and I will see ya.